Let's just get this started. You know, we can't even really get angry at this point. Like, it's, it's just so unsurprising how the game was released this way. <laughs> and you'd think Capcom would have learned from their past mistakes. And they have. Now they're making all new ones. You better batten down the hatches. It's going to get loud. Here's our review of Street Fighter V. Capcom, Capcom, Capcom. We really wanted to believe that they were going to start moving in the right direction. After years of bad business decisions and poor practices, now, when Street Fighter V was announced, we admit we were a little lukewarm to it. But with that being said, we understand that Street Fighter has a huge fan base and a legacy. So it makes sense that they will officially bring this franchise to the next generation. So were they able to do it? Just like Netherrealm did with Mortal Kombat? <laughs> Don't hold your breath. Okay, let's be fair. Here are the positives. Graphically, this game does look fantastic. The characters seem like they popped out of a 90s comic book with their bulging biceps and muscular legs. And that's just the ladies. The models are beautifully designed and the backgrounds are bright and colorful. As for the fighting itself, well, it's Street Fighter. The core battling is still well done with solid responsive controls and flashy moves. Per usual, there are six attack buttons that you use to strike your foes. The typical half-circle movements are there to allow you to do special moves. The fun in Street Fighter has always been the ability to button mash your way, i.e. faking it, to pilot victories, but there's enough strategy here for players to explore, experiment with, and master. So the serious competitors should be pleased. The EX Gates returns here to allow you to do special moves like Critical Arts, but one new thing is the V Gauge which replaces focus attacks. This gauge builds when you receive attacks. V skills allow you to perform specific attacks to each character. V reversals that allow you to do counters while being attacked, and V triggers which will allow you to do a unique ability which will take up the entire gauge. Funny how the V gauge looks like a 5. Now when the game first launched, it had a load of problems. One was pretty much centered around the online not working, but since the time of this review being out, the game has been patched to some degree already, which has fixed some of the online issues, such as matchmaking. So, there's that. But there still are a load of other problems that the game has, such as no penalties for leaving a fight early, just in case you got tired of getting your ass whooped. But that is not the main problem with this game. No. The main problem is that it's barely a game at all. The lack of modes in this game is downright criminal. As far as modes go, other than online, we have story mode, and we use that term loosely, a survival mode, and a training mode. That's it. There is no arcade mode. No arcade mode? How the f*** do you not have an arcade mode in a fighting game? This means that you can't fight a CPU in a one-on-one -on -one traditional two out of three rounds fight. This just left us speechless. As for the story, well, each character fights four, sometimes three, sometimes two, one round matches. In between, you do have these... Oh, this is pathetic. The game has single scene pictures that look like they were drawn off of deviant art. No disrespect. These things look worse than Will's artwork. Ah! Look, we know that Capcom's never put any real effort in their storytelling with Street Fighter. It always boils down to M. Bison wants to take over the world with fighters, Ryu battling the Satsu no Hado, and whatever. But why couldn't we have a real story mode? I mean, we got them in games like Mortal Kombat X, and Injustice, and Tekken, and Blaze Blue, and Guilty Gear. Okay, these games' stories aren't on the level of Shakespeare, but. At least they're fun to play through. At least they're not this! This game is so freaking bare bone, it makes Marvel vs. Capcom 3 look like the freaking Witcher 3! 
But at least when you first boot up the game, you at least get a quick tutorial, so there is that at least. As for the roster, you've got 16 characters to choose from, which are a mixture of classic Street Fighter characters, Alpha, and Newcomers. The smallest roster didn't bother us and never really has. As long as each character is unique and fun to play, we would rather have a small cast of cool characters like Skullgirls than a game with tons of characters in which only a handful of them are any good. And besides, there are more characters coming in DLC. I mean, we expected that. What we didn't expect is that this game to be as stripped down as it is. Okay, look, Capcom fans, we need to talk. We get it. You love Capcom. We love it too. Or we love what it used to be. What it used to represent. Capcom was a part of our childhoods. But when they do something that's just not right, they should be called out on it. Now, if all you care about is graphics and the fighting, well, fine. But this game is not worth $60 in this state. I mean, come on. This game, the way it was released, should have been charged $19.99. At most. Now, we can already hear what some of you are saying, because there are so many of you out there running damage control. We're going to get these features later. Are you sure? Basically, as of now, you're paying $60 for promises. Promises that eventually we'll get to these things that should have been available to begin with. This nickel and diming stuff has gone too far. Even if all of the other stuff comes out later, do you really think it'll be for free? You already paid a full price, so what's stopping them from charging fees for the content missing later? Crapcom has not changed. They just slightly altered their marketing to make it seem like they've done better in the eyes of the public. Sure, there may not be on-disc DLC. Sure, there may not be other versions of Street Fighter V down the line, which remains to be seen, but there doesn't have to be. They've already got you by releasing the game as stripped down as it possibly can be just so they can literally nickel and dime you for every other feature it will no doubt have on its store in future updates. It's like they think we're stupid. We're talking about the same guys here who tried to charge you for different color palettes on costumes. That is the major issue. That we are now in an industry that thinks it's okay to release half-completed projects, or in this case, quarter-completed, and we'll just fix it all later and charge you up the ass for it. We need to stop being okay with this. We need to stop defending these companies. The games were released completed before, you know, so why can't they be now? As Alpha Omega Sin stated, I get people liking a game series, but making excuses for an unfinished and rushed product means you don't respect the quality or standard of the series. And enough with these dumb fanboy wars. This is not a Sony fan issue or a Microsoft fan issue. This is something that affects all gamers. And if these companies don't care enough for their own titles, then it's up to us. Okay, look, we're sorry for getting too preachy here, but we're just so sick and tired of this. When you buy a game at full price on the day of its launch, you should get your money's worth. Purposely holding back content that's ready to go out the door has no business being blocked off from the game you've paid for. Imagine if Super Smash Bros. did this crap. Like imagine if they blocked off characters like Link, Fox, Kirby, and Peach and released them as DLC the same day the game came out. You know what? Capcom does this on purpose. But no, Nintendo did it right. They let the gamers choose what the characters would be and worked on them long after the game was out. Oh, but Capcom certainly took your wallets into consideration, right? I mean, sure, if you play the game online enough and do enough fights, sure, you can unlock all the characters that way. Yeah, not really. Sure, it's possible, but the amount of time it's going to take for any player to do this is fairly unrealistic. Whether you know it or not, you're still pretty much forced to purchase the characters. It's like those cell phone games that encourage that, sure, you can unlock cooler features by wasting enough unrealistic amount of time, or you can just buy them all now, which we will no doubt do. Unless you say no. We've had enough. Unfortunately, despite the great graphics and the solid fighting mechanics, we just can't recommend Street Fighter V in its current state, or at all. Especially when there's other better alternatives out there. It's just not worth it. Now some of you are immediately jumping to the defense card like, Oh, but all the downloads and patches will come out soon and that'll make the game much better. Yeah, well here's the problem. We can't judge the game based on what it may or may not be in the future because of promises that it will be. All we can do is judge the game based on how it was physically released for the full price. And Capcom, all we can say is we are really disgusted and frankly not at all surprised.
In Capcom, I defended you. You made me feel stupid. At this point, I don't want you guys to make another Mega Man game. It'll probably just be two levels and the rest of it will be on DLC. But in the end, it's all just our own opinion. Feel free to agree or disagree, and if you disagree, you can always comment below and call us whatever you want. And I'm just, we're kind of used to it at this point. But hey, at least we're just going to be honest and not lie to you like other companies out there. Meantime, you've been watching TheBethHeadToGaming.com. I'm your host, William Morris. And this has been a review. I need a drink.